Hello and welcome to this quick presentation on how to choose the number of averages you should use in your data collector. You know, one easy way to answer this question is to use 10 averages and that should see you good in most applications. The more averages you use, of course, the longer you will spend at the machine. Often, depending on your FMAX setting, we're not talking much more time, but it is important to make sure you get the full story from the machine. What you've got to visualize inside a machine is that from one moment to the next, the vibration does change because the shaft is turning, liquids are flowing through the pump, the gears are meshing together and it can take time for certain gears to come into mesh with other gears. The balls are rolling around in the bearing and they're spinning and any damage on the balls will come into contact with the outer race sometimes and the inner race and there's just all sorts of things going on inside your machine. And you just have to make sure that you're listening to it long enough to get that full message. You want to listen to it long enough so that the detail you see in the spectrum represents all of the forces and the potential defects that are going on inside the machine. You're also doing it so that all the noise that you normally hear is represented in all of the vibration the analyzer listened to so that we can average the noise together. And out of all of this, we want a repeatable measurement that we can compare from one moment to the next. But you need to think about the type of machine. You know, with mining applications, with a ball mill or something like that, you've got a lot of noise, a lot of vibration. You need more averages. If you took four averages, um, I, I guarantee you, if you took a measurement, then tried another one a minute later, and another one a minute later, and one minute later after that, you would find that there's variation in the vibration. Well, which one should you analyze? You know, which one's the real representation? Well, none of them are. You need more averages. For your simple little motor pump there, you know, a smaller number of averages will do as long as there's no beating, no speed variation, no sort of turbulence and cavitation and this sort of thing going on because they are not constant sources of vibration. So how do you figure it out? One of the challenges is that, you know, if you went out to the machine to do any tests, it might be in good condition right now, but um, you're trying to catch the situation where it's in poor condition. But certainly one thing you can do, if your data collector supports it, is to sit there and either set it up for four averages and take a measurement, and then set it up for ten averages and take a measurement and see if there's a difference between those two, see if there's much variation. See if you can just watch a live spectrum and just see does it seem to be just steady or is it bouncing all over the place as some examples I'll show you in just a moment. Um, you can also sit there with the analyzer again if you can do this set it to 30 averages but ask for a live update after every average and what you might find is that initially the spectrum will change and then it'll become steady and what you're trying to do is figure out at about what stage did it become steady. Now you might be sitting there saying, oh, but Jason, you know, we've got so many machines and so many test locations and so on. Like everything, you've just got to decide where it's most important to take this extra effort and which machines are likely to have more vi variation in the vibration. Uh, some machines certainly will more than others. But uh, what we can do is just have a little look. Now if you've seen the other uh, little quick presentations on um, averaging, you'll be familiar with this program. We've got a few that demonstrate this sort of thing. But you know, here is all the vibration from the machine. And it's interesting that if I click from sample to sample, now these, these samples some of them were chosen for specific reasons. They demonstrate something of interest. But take this one. Look how smooth that vibration looks. It looks like the most boring chunk of time vibration that you could imagine. But if we play it, watch the amplitude here and here. You can see there's some beating going on, which I can't really see. And there's variation. You know, some, some samples really show the, uh, the changes in the vibration. 
um, but we don't see as much in the spectrum. It just depends whether it's modulation, beating, and so on. Um, bottom line is, you know, uh, if you were to go through just with different sources of vibration, I mean, in this case, we've got this vibration that is nice and smooth sometimes, and there's suddenly these bursts, and we can see this area of the spectrum here, you know, rise up, and then it falls down in, in those areas. Thing is, you've just got to get to know your machine. Just become familiar with how much the uh, vibration changes. Even with this little sample here, if I turn on my averaging option, let's reset that, um, and we just take a, a little look. This is just a sort of a pretty simple uh, piece of vibration, but if I go through and show the averages, if you look you know, on the screen here, it's a bit easier than watching on this screen, but um, you see the light grey areas are the individual spectra that have been averaged together to create the orange one. And you can see that in a lot of places the, the vibration didn't vary very much. The average is good, you know, four averages would just be fine in those cases. You know, another sample of vibration um, may just have certain areas where there is vibration of, of interest. Just reset that. There we go. If I zoom in here, for example, we'll see that there's some vibration that's very constant in amplitude all the time, and other vibration that, that varies much more. So if you watch just in this area here, you can see that these, you'll see the grey peak in the background, how much variation there is. In fact, if I just turn off the averaging for a second, we just watch the live data, you see again that the instantaneous spectrum, the green one, isn't changing much in this area and it's changing a lot over here. Now really, this is just an ordinary machine. It just sounds like a machine, but there are just some frequencies that vary a bit more. Again, you know, it doesn't happen to be a really high amplitude. We're not going to lose too much sleep over it. We might recognize that they are sidebands and to do with modulation. That's all great, but um, we want some repeatability out of this. So if we have enough averages, we get that repeatability. We get a good representation of the vibration from the machine. Anyway, I hope that uh, presentation was useful. If you've got an analyzer you can do some of those tools with, then you might go out to some of your machines and just test whether you really do have enough averages. Anyway, thanks for viewing the presentation.